Good. I, I just want to look at some of the basic terms that we use when we study translation. And these terms are used in a whole range of subjects on translation. So you might have seen them in a previous subject. This could be just quick revision for you. First, the text that we translate from is known traditionally in English as the source text. I like to call it the start text. It doesn't matter, it's ST. The abbreviation is ST. Why start text? Well, uh, if a client sends you uh, a job to be done, they'll send you the ST, right? The text you have to translate. But often these days, they'll also send a translation memory. You'll see what that is in a minute, a glossary and some instructions. So actually the translator isn't starting from the text. Well, they're starting with the text, but it's not the only source uh, that they're working from. It's not the source of all your solutions. It's just the place that you start your translation process from. Therefore start, but use ST, I'm not going to insist. The text you produce is called a translation. Uh, technically, we prefer the term target text or TT. MT is then machine translation of the kind you know as what Google Translate, Microsoft Translator, Udao, Baidu, and many, many more, all machine translation. Not to be confused with TMs. TMs are translation memory suites. Uh, a TM is a set of electronic tools that enables you to bring up your previous translation of a particular sentence or your translation of sentences that are similar to the one you're translating. Uh, you'll see how this works later on. The name for that is TM, translation memory. These days though, those two technologies tend to come together. Most translation memory suites incorporate an MT feed. They have uh, information coming in from machine translation. So the technologies we're using are really TMMT, just to put the two together. We often hear people talk about CAT tools. CAT, C-A-T, stands for Computer Assisted or Aided Translation. I don't use that term basically because these days, anything we do with language, including what you're doing right now, is uh, assisted by computers. So to say, oh, it's a, it's a computer assisted translation. No, all translations are these days. The term doesn't mean much, but you'll hear it and you have to recognize it. It's referring to basically translation memory suites in most cases. More terms. Once we get the idea of going from ST to TT, from a start side to a target side, we just fill in the other terms. So SL would obviously be your source or target language, and TL is therefore your ah, source or start language, and TL is your target language. Uh, similarly, we could have SC, the, the start culture, and TC, the target culture. There are also uh, words that we use or, or acronyms that we use for languages. Uh, L1 is your first or mother tongue usually. And then we talk about L2 is your first additional language. L3 can go on. Now L1 and L2 and L3, these are terms used in language acquisition. Uh, we refer to them when we talk about translation, but uh, in translation, we, if we're analyzing text, we'll talk about the start language and the target language, okay? And L1, L2 refers to a person's acquisition of languages from a slightly different field. Where it gets tricky though and confusing is when people talk about, especially conference interpreters, we talk about them working into their A language, usually, which is their strongest language in that particular field, and their B language would be their next strongest or slightly weaker language, and interpreters can have C languages as well. well we could use the same terminology referring to written translation 
the important thing, though, is that you remember that L1, L2 belongs to language acquisition. Um, SLTL belongs to analyzing a translation. And A language, B language uh, belongs to the uh, translator or interpreter's performance, and more particularly in the field of conference interpreting. Sorry about that. It's just that translation studies is an interdiscipline, uh, so we get terms from many other disciplines coming into the way we speak. Here's just a few more. We're almost at the end. When we work on MT output, that is machine translations, as translators, we are correcting it as we go. And that correction process is called post editing with a hyphen or without. Now, post editing is a term that is meaningful because it's opposed to pre editing. Now, pre editing needs the hyphen, which is why I tend to use a hyphen up here for both terms. What's pre editing? Well, we get a text. We know that some things are going to be difficult for machine translation. So we change those things before it goes through the MT. And this produces a better output. So there are two ways we can work with MT. One is pre editing, uh, fixing up a text. For example, very long sentences are problematic. Break it up into shorter sentences, it'll go much better through MT. So that's pre-editing and then post-editing is repairing or correcting what comes out of the MT. Now, post-editing can be compared with revision. Revision is just a generic term for fixing up a translation applied to any translation, whether it comes from MT or from a fully human translation process. And revision can be compared with editing. Uh, now, revision um, often incorporates some attention to the ST. You're looking at a TT and you look at how it's rendered the ST, particularly in problematic passages. Editing is just preparing a text for publication. So uh, editing could be applied to any text whatsoever and it won't involve referring back to an ST. Those are those two terms will come. Uh, to the question of different terms for revision a bit later. One last term, just to show how all these acronyms come together, back translation. Let's say I'm translating from Chinese into English and I have an English version and I'm not sure if it really represents what's in the Chinese. Well, I can get that translation and I can, for example, put it in MT and tell it to take that translation, the TT, back into Chinese, into the SL. And I can see what it gives. And if the original ST, the text that was originally translated, is different from the translation produced from the TT, the back translation, then it's probable that something's gone wrong. Okay, so what is the back translation? There it is. It's a translation made from a TT into the SL, and usually it's to a check on uh, what's happened. And sometimes pedagogically, we can use it to illustrate the, uh, the different changes that have been made uh, in the translation process. That's it. If you're confused now, don't worry. You can come back and look at this PowerPoint as we go along, but you will see us using these basic terms in, in uh, virtually all of the future lessons, so they shouldn't be too confusing for you. Uh, with that, I wish you good luck. <laughs>